I want to see if it's as real as you say it is. He's got the sniffles now. <laughs> We are going around the city of Isabela in Basilan in one of the most southern parts of the Philippines. The food in this region is so unique and such an important part of Filipino culture. When you travel here, you will see a lot of dishes that have a black hue to them and that is due to the use of shunog lahing, a burnt coconut powder that is key to so many Taosug dishes. The most popular one probably being chula itum a burnt coconut peppery beef soup that you should try making at home today. So we've been going around Basilan and we've toured this region a few times and one of the ingredients that you see all the time is this burnt coconut which is really prevalent in Tao soup cooking and it's so flavorful and tasty and it really gives a lot of those dishes so much of its flavor. So I'm here with Chef Nadri. Uh, we're at the beautiful Bahali Beach. Um, this used to be called Malama uh, Malamaui. Malamaui White Beach before. They changed the name recently and he volunteered to show me how to do a chula itum, black beef soup. The first thing we have to do, I know your name to? Shunuglahin. Shunuglahin. Burn coconut. Burn coconut. Okay, so this being a key ingredient, we're gonna go ahead and start by cooking this first and charring it. So we're just over the live fire. So 10 to 15 minutes really, really get it charred completely and I think it dries out also the moisture in the coconut, which helps kind of cutting it and making it into that flaky texture that we have over there. It really is kind of like, it shows you craftiness with ingredients. You're using the whole coconut, while most people will use kind of like the coconut milk or the coconut oil. Here by charring it, you're really adding a different layer of flavor to the dish, which I really like. In places like Bicol, they'll actually char it, not like this specifically, but by adding coal usually, or even in Laguna, using that with some water to make like a blackened coconut milk, which is really cool as well. But I like how it's used here, because it's really used as a spice, and not a way to kind of add liquid um, to the whole dish. So cooking both sides to make sure that it is as dry as possible, so then it's easier. And then, so they use a really cool mortar and pestle there to really make it kind of like that, those flakes that we saw. Once the coconut is completely burnt, you can easily chop it up with some scissors, and if you're looking for something a little finer, you can also pound it out. I actually want to try it fresh. Mm -hmm. So here is mostly kind of the flakes. But here you have some of that real coconut chewy flavor. I could eat this as a snack. That's delicious. Okay, so I know the first step namin. Okay. Too big lang. This is a step that is still quite common in the Philippines. However, if you know where you're getting your protein and how it was butchered, it can be skipped completely. We are using chunks of beef here, but you can also make it with bones to draw out more flavor. The beef is then mixed with burnt coconut. So now we're making you my paste, no? Chule tum is something that you now find a lot in Yakan villages as well. Um, Sama people make it as well. So it really is a dish that has spread throughout this region quite well. And what I love about it is that you don't really see spice pastes in Tagalog cuisine or Northern Filipino cuisine. So to see it applied here kind of just shows you the connection that we have with places like Indonesia or Malaysia where they're all about kind of spice pastes, especially when they're cooking with uh, proteins. So ginger's done, turmeric, so skin's on, just bashed through. I think it kind of serves as the base marinade for the beef. Garlic. After adding our garlic, some siling labuyo. Can I taste? Mm -hmm. I want to see if it's as real as you say it is. 
That's not stealing Labuya, that's something else. Okay. That's a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna struggle there. No, I'm not gonna drink water at first. Native Sile. Native Sile. Time to cook. I love cooking on fresh wood. It really brings out most of the flavor of the dishes. That chili is still murdering my mouth. Right now it's spreading to my lips. My tongue is starting to get really numb. So don't be an idiot. See, this is a manila boy. And this is what happens when you put a manila boy in the sea then. He's got the sniffles now. Ugh, I need help. Lots of pepper. So massive thing that a lot of people probably wouldn't notice and Mon noticed it because he shoots food all the time. They actually cook the pepper with the onions and the garlic and what that does is actually amplify the flavor of the pepper. So it just shows you how important the pepper flavor is here. A lot of cuisines like Indian cuisine, Indonesian cuisine, you'll find a lot of the times like some of the seasoning and spices are actually cooked before all the other aromatics. So having that pepper toasted first makes a massive difference. Lemongrass is added and the mix is covered over a controlled fire to draw out as much flavor and fat from the meat. So proper kind of like super stew making process where you would sear the beef first to really give that char, that maya reaction, all the flavors to get together. That was yung too big to give it, um, to give that broth just so much flavor also. So that was my 30 minutes without water covered. So just get it to simmer to a boil, get everything hot, and that's why this is more like, it's more like a soup, no? Okay. lang natin ng salt. Brown sugar. Okay. Tapos itong dish, usually ba dati, mga royalty, no? Parang fiesta, or kung may wedding. Wedding. Okay. Mga And then usually it's a big, big pot, no? Big kawa. Nice. I mean, small pieces of beef like this will probably take um, total 45 to an hour to cook to get nice and tender. But uh, if you're making a big batch, that's 10, 12 hours of just continuous cooking to make it nice and tender. But can't ask for a better setting. So this is a little surprise. So this is what you call uh, dulang, right? It's like when there's special guests, it's really all of their delicacies put together in one plate. Inahanda po namin ang dulang kapag mayroon po kami ano, a special na occasion like kanduri po, ganyan, akika, pagkawin. Mga weddings also. Yes, but... okay. This looks insane. Uh, let's start with the chula itum. So we just had this last night in Zamboanga City, actually. So nice and light, as you can see, but that turmeric really comes through. Mm. So tender, spicy. There's that chili that got me a while ago. Mm. I really feel like cooking it on a live fire really makes a difference in terms of the smokiness of the flavor. And that's why I wanted to show you kind of this whole recipe because I feel like it's something you can make at home and I feel like it's a dish that we should be more proud of. When people talk about Filipino food, they tend to talk about a certain type of Filipino food specifically. There's so much to it, there's so many layers to it. And when you ask people, you know, what's your favorite dish? Yeah, it's subjective. We all have our favorite dishes, but it would be great for Taosug, for Moro, uh, for Maranao, for Yakan, for Sama cooking to be part of that national conversation when it comes to food because they have so much to offer um, that is extremely unique. And this is kind of like, for me, one of the soups that could kind of put it in the spotlight. I know you see it from time to time, but you still won't walk into to a random restaurant in Manila that serves Filipino food from all over the Philippines that actually makes this kind of food. They should. They prepared an amazing seafood feast for us as well, just like everywhere we went on this island. The full video will be out soon, but today we are focusing on chula etu. So that's how you make that dish. You can actually make it at home because the ingredients are quite simple and easy to find. 
And if you want to dig deeper into Yakan, Sama, and just the culture, the multicultural island of Basilan, make sure you catch all our other videos. We'll be posting them extremely soon. There's lots to look forward to, and I hope you stick around to check them all out. See you guys.